Hey guys, welcome to back to the VoIP guys. Uh, as promised last time around, what we're going to do today is we're going to get uh, a bit more in depth um, <laughs> with Wireshark this time. Again. Yeah, in, again. Um, but before we start, we did n wonder why last time around the packet size wasn't that big. Yes. And we will analyze this now okay. with Wireshark and explain what we found out and then um, try to understand what happened. Okay. Then. So we are doing two things at once. We have the first look to Wireshark and we do a real debug why there yeah. are so cool. few packets only. Then take it away. Okay, what I have to do now is to copy the file from the server to my local machine for sure because Wireshark, as I explained last time, is my local tool mm -hmm. and I have to um, have the files in Wireshark. Yeah. So I copied them over. Um, that's all. Here, this is Wireshark. Um, it's extremely helpful. As I, I mentioned already, you can download it um, just from the project's homepage. It's an open source tool. Okay. So uh, it's available for uh, Linux for sure, for mm -hmm. Windows and for Mac. Okay. Um, there are pre, um, uh, there are some distributions for uh, right. every uh, operating, not every, but the biggest operating system. Yeah, the main systems, operating system. The main, system. main yeah. operating systems. <laughs> Um, so it's really, really good tool. Mm -hmm. And normally, not normally, it's a network protocol analyzer, as you can see. So it's not a special tool for SIP or for telephony. Mm -hmm. But as you can see here, it has a special tab for telephony tools. And there are a lot of telephony tools mm -hmm. on top of um, the network protocol analyzer functionality. Right. So it's really, really a good tool. Um, as you can see here, I just copied it to my local user, the PCAP file from the system, mm -hmm. and I can open it. There are two modes. You can just start a sniff on your local network um, mm -hmm. environment, but that's not what we want, because as I mentioned, in my local machine there is no traffic for, yeah. for SIP. Um, I want to debug, so I have to open the file. These are the two options, live capture or open a file. Now you can see here, we have all the traffic which um, ran on the interface while we did the debug. So my SSH connection, uh, for instance, um, TCP, MDNS, here is some SIP, SDP, blah, 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 some other stuff, I think ICMP um, stuff. So you can see there is everything in there. Mm -hmm. And if you have not only one call, but many calls on the system and a heavy load on the system, then this file can be very, very long. Yeah. But that's not the problem for you because you're not going to click on every packet and see, aha, 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 what kind of packet <laughs> is this? Um, you have great tools in there to analyze the file. The most uh, time I start with telephony and with the great web call feature. Okay. Just click on it. Then it analyzes the file and you can see all calls which were in the dump. Mm -hmm. So why are there two calls? Oh, we had only one call. Yeah. But that's because of the call legs. We talked about that, I yeah. think, in, in, in the past. One of the, the SIP introduction tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in one of them. <laughs> um, so we have one call leg from the phone A and the other one to the back. PBX server, to the asterisk server, and then from the oh. PBX to phone B. Mm -hmm. So those are the two call legs. And they're represented here in two lines. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's why there are two calls. Um, you can see uh, some details, packets. So one call leg has more than the other. Why? Because A is, has some more packets because it says, I want to talk to B. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he has more, more packets and then it invites of course, yeah. um, mm -hmm. the B and so there are less packets yeah. on the other call leg, that's normal. Right, okay. Um, and that's it. And then I can choose one, um, which one I want to have a look at. In most cases, the first one, it does not matter very much because on both call legs you can see all SIP flow because uh -huh. it goes from A to be. Uh, to be so you can see mm -hmm. and if you want to debug the audio stream later on mm -hmm. then it's also not very important mm, yeah I will tell when it's important or not <laughs> but for sure both um, partners both mm -hmm. legs can hear all audio because yeah. in one case you couldn't hear one audio or mm -hmm. I couldn't hear audio there is a special case which is one-way audio if 
one. Which we've already talked about. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but normally you hear both yeah. call legs in, bo in both call legs all the audio. Right. But if you want to debug um, one-way audio, mm -hmm. then you can see there is only one audio stream in the one call leg and you can see where the problem is uh -huh. um, and where the audio stops. Okay. But that's too much for now. Uh, the most, in, in most cases, I just click on flow and then you can see it analyzes um, the zip flow. This is a little bit of a problem on the small screen for the video resolution. Mm -hmm. But um, you can see here what happened for that call in terms of zip. And that's very, very useful because you can see the SIP conversation without all the, the garbage mm -hmm. in between. Yeah. And if you click here, I try to, because of the small monitor, I just move that away. It's right like this. If I click here, I want to see the invite. Then you can see here, it marks the concurrent packet. Uh -huh. So if I go down to here, um, I can see the details of the packet on the left side. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very useful because I don't have to search where does this call start and if there are four or five concurrent calls, mm -hmm. then you have no chance to find out which packet belongs to which call and yeah, stuff course, like yeah. this. And so it's really, really easy. Mm -hmm. And let's see um, what happens and let's see what, um, what these uh, messages, these zip messages in general mean. So the first package is the invite. We already talked about um, the telephone says, I want to talk to blah, 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 blah. And we can now have a deeper look to the invite uh, and then to the other packets. I just explained a little bit mm -hmm. um, what happens here. So if I see the packet um, here, it's marked because I marked it here and then it's selected there. And you have to have the details for the packet. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the whole stack, the frame, the Ethernet, the IP protocol, the UDP protocol. Mm -hmm. And that's the overhead we talked already about, um, about how much bandwidth does a codec consume. Yep. And I said, this is the netto bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And it adds some stuff from the, um, from the protocols. And here you can see the some stuff. <laughs> right. Okay. And here starts the SIP protocol which we're interested in. So it's carried by UDP and for sure for the IP protocol and for sure an Ethernet frame around. Mm -hmm. So um, here you can see uh, the invite and you can see invite SIP 200 at the PBX's IP address. So the telephone A says, I want to talk to 200. Right, yeah. Um, then what we get as answer is, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> we get an answer. Um, the PBX says, who are you? Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to you. You are unauthorized. Okay. So we say, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we are unauthorized. The next thing is um, we send again an invite. Why do we do this? Now we are sending an invite again, but with in, in the packet, there are our credentials. Right. Not plain text, hashed, mm -hmm. but we transmit our credentials. We can see that um, somewhere, I think, in the message body. No, this is already SDP. Um, the message header. We can see the invite from blah, 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 blah. And here we can see the authorization. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the hashes. Uh, there is no password as who we are. Mm -hmm. There is a realm and there is a hash um, of our password. Right. And we send um, the invitation again, but um, in the header with also our credentials. And we talked about the SDP protocol already, where we described the session. And here you can see, I want to use Codex Speaks preferred, then ELBC, then blah, 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 blah. So here you can see the soft phone says, I want to use that codex right. and mm -hmm. describes the session. It does this in the first invite also, but in the second invite, there is uh, in addition, mm -hmm. the credentials. Okay. Then the PBX says, now I like you more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to call the other call leg. Right. Um, the invite of the other call leg, we cannot see in that stream because it's in the second call leg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we get a trying, so the, the PBX says, I try. 
and okay, I did it, and now the telephone is ringing. And um, now the okay is the telephone on the other side did answer the call. Mm -hmm. And we say, that's great. And um, then the phone call would start normally. Yeah. It starts, but what happens now is something special. Normally here you would see the RDP packet with the payload with the speech in it. Mm -hmm. But now here comes the problem, not the problem, here comes the default behavior of asterisk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, if it's possible, I do a re-invite. We talked already about the re-invite. Normally the RTP stream would go from phone A to the PBX and then back into to the phone, phone B. B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all the payload goes through my PBX system. Mm -hmm. Um, the default behavior of asterisk is that it allows a re-invite. Mm -hmm. So the two phones can say why we should um, use um, the asterisk PBX for our RTP stream. We can send the RTP stream directly yep. from A to B without the PBX system. Okay. And that's called re-invite. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened here. We can see it now. Um, we get a new packet with a new invitation. And we say, okay, that's good. And then we invite, we can see the invite uh, from one to the another um, phone. Mm -hmm. And then we can see one RTP packet. I think, I don't know, it's lost. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, uh, the A sends the RTP packets to B mm -hmm. directly. So we can only see one RTP packet, maybe the first one. And then yeah. uh, we send the RTP packets directly from A to B. So we cannot see any RTP packets um, in that analysis because... Mm -hmm. Didn't go over the server. Yes, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, and next time around, we try to have a look how to change. No, mm -hmm. we don't try. We have a look yeah, uh, how to we change. Will, we will do it, yeah. <laughs> we, we, how to change that behavior mm -hmm. and uh, give some tips when to change it and then do another dump mm -hmm. and then see what we can do with the audio stream. Yeah. Cool. Um, and if you guys uh, want to get a sort of a refresher on call eggs and this, uh, invites and re-invites, uh, just check out the blog uh, post on blog.pascon.net. I put a nice little graphic diagram together and everything, so you can have it there. All right then. Um, yeah, so next time we will actually uh, configure our system so that we don't have the re-invite and we can have a look at Wireshark in full detail with RTP uh, payloads and so on. True. Cool. Good. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. See you. Goodbye.